Hey everyone, welcome to Yoga Land's Yoga Teacher Companion. I'm your host, Jason Crandall. And last week, we had a breakdown of my favorite preparations for Hanumanasana or splits. And it got me thinking that I want to do one now about my favorite preparations for Lotus or Padmasana. I'm not going to go into the details of Lotus itself. I'm not going to go into the various warnings of Lotus itself. So I will just say this. For Lotus to work, it should feel good. It should feel good in the body. It shouldn't have a negative impact on the knees. And that's it. That's all I'm going to address right now. Before too long, I'll do a whole breakdown about practicing and teaching Lotus. Just like all of the details of the pose and how I like to have people transition into it because it's really specific. And if you're going to be meticulous with any pose, it's this one. But all of that being said, as teachers and as practitioners, I think we can use some interesting ways to teach the body and to prepare for Padmasana. And here's the deal. Even if you don't get into Padmasana, who cares? You still have these poses to use to make you feel better in your body and facilitate greater range of motion in your hips. So, we'll get at it. My first favorite thing to show you and do is reclined leg circles, okay? Now watch what I'm gonna do with this. You can do this without a block, but I'm gonna do it on a block. Doing it on a block just gives the hip a little bit more space to play with. So watch what I'm gonna do, okay? So I'm gonna land my back, I'm gonna lift my hips, I'm gonna slide the block at its lowest height under the back of the pelvis, the sacrum, okay? And then all I'm gonna do, everybody, I'm not going to use my hands. Like as much as I'm like inclined to grab a foot and pull a little bit deeper, this is all about active range of motion and it's all about light, easy, early technique, okay? So watch, I straighten one leg on the ground, I take the other leg up towards the ceiling. Like I'm doing Supta Padding Gustasana, right? We did this in the Hanumanasana sequence, right? But instead of holding on, I take a wide leg circle, I swing it all the way around, I bend the knee, and I take the leg into half lotus. My leg takes my leg into half lotus. I didn't hold on to it. I don't care that it could go higher. I'm not gonna reach down and pull it up, okay? So all I'm doing is this active range of motion circle. And I'll do five to 10 on the same side, okay? And again, I really like to do this pretty much first thing in a sequence. You don't have to, you can do it other phases, but I like to do this really early, and this is simple warm up. Now when we do this everybody, I'm gonna do the second side. I'm not looking for any obvious stretch. This is just a simple mobility exercise, okay? So my one leg is down and straight, my other leg is up and straight, and then I'm gonna do leg circles, almost like I'm in a Pilates reformer doing leg circles, right? I take that around, I bend the knee and I take it into half lotus. So my legs are taking my legs into half lotus. My hand is not. My hand is not helping. Do not get grabby with your hands, okay? Another thing I love to do everybody, and this is another thing I'll do really early in a sequence. What you just did was much more active range of motion and just this like, mobility exercise where you're starting to glide. This now is a much more conventional leveraged stretch, but we're gonna go at an angle that is incredibly um, novel, okay? This is really, really uncommon, but it's so useful for people and you'll feel the difference right away. So you can lay on your back and it starts as a very conventional figure four, okay? I gotta move this mic back. Starts as this very conventional mic figure four. So I'm starting left ankle on top of right knee because I think that's gonna be the better angle to show it, okay? And then I just hold on, right? So here, this is like a good tried and true outer hip stretch. My hands are holding my right leg. My left ankle is on my right knee. I'm gently hugging in. It's a simple figure four reclined hip stretch for my left side, okay? So now what I do, everybody, I start with this very conventional setup and then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna roll onto my right side. And as I roll onto my right side, and literally I'm just gonna roll all the way over to my right side. As I roll onto my right side, 
the bottom of my left foot comes to the floor. Because my left ankle is on top of my right knee, so I roll all the way to my right side, and the bottom of my left foot is on the floor. Then I slide, there's a lot of words here, okay, bear with me. I slide my right hand out, and I hold down my left foot. And then I reach the left arm up, and I do a recline twist, reaching my left arm out to the left side. So everybody, if you can see this, this is a combination of a reclined twist with a reclined figure four hip stretch. And what this does is it gets to the lateral part of the top hip at a very different and unfamiliar angle. So for a lot of people, they'll get a deep lateral hip stretch in this pose and part of that, part of that joint that they don't usually feel it. And I'll just stay here for a little bit of time breathing steadily and then I come back up to center. So I'm gonna show that one more time. I go left ankle to right knee, I hold my right shin, I pull in, it's a really conventional outer hip stretch. Now I stay on that same leg, but I just roll to my right side. I roll my whole body to my right side. The bottom of my left foot comes to the floor. I don't move my legs, my legs don't change position right here. I just slide my right hand out, hold down the top of the left foot with my right hand, and then I do a recline twist, reaching the left arm out to the side, okay? I'm gonna say something kind of ridiculous, which Lord knows won't be the first time I've said this. If this pose works for you, it works really, 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 really well for you. It's the nature of any yoga pose, like not every yoga posture works well for everybody. Our bodies are, they're varied and they're unique. So not everything is gonna work out equally for everybody. That's just how bodies work. But when that pose works, it works so well because it gets to an angle of the hip joint that almost no other posture does. Now the next thing I like to do is what I call my three-way pigeon pose opener, okay? So I'm gonna lead with my, I'm gonna go right leg forward, okay? So my right leg's forward, and what I mean by three ways, okay? So it's, you're gonna do three variations on, on each side. So my right leg is forward, my left leg's back, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go four arms to the floor. This is way one, okay? So this is a very conventional setup, but I'm not just gonna sit here and let the weight of my body drop on passive legs. Instead, with the front shin, I'm gonna gently press down and pull towards my back leg. With my back foot, I'm gonna gently press down and pull towards my front leg. So the muscles that are stretching are slightly engaged while they're stretching. Okay, so I stay here for a handful of breaths. The duration that you stay when you practice or teach, that's to your discretion. So this is the first setup. Then part two, okay? I keep the same action to my legs, but I prop up onto the left forearm and I take the right fingertips to the floor next to the right knee, okay? Now as I do this, I don't wanna be really heavy. A lot of times people, when they're in pigeon, they're just, they're deflated. I don't mean that mentally or emotionally, it's not even a bad thing, but so oftentimes we just let the weight of the body sink, okay? I don't want that for these poses. So you press the floor away, you lift the chest up. I always tell people it's like you're doing a lunging twist here, okay? Now, you can just stay like this, or even better, what I like to do is I connect my left hand to the outside of my right knee, okay? So my left hand is holding the outside of the right knee, and all that does is that gives me something for my knee to push out into. So as my knee presses out into that hand, that's giving me not only a stretch in the posterior hip, but in the true outer hip and the abductor. It's a really good lateral hip opener. This is part two. And then part three, everybody, you go back to part one, and then you just walk your upper body 45 degrees to the left. So, or in the opposite direction of the front leg. So I'm walking my upper body away from my front knee. My front knee is my right knee. I'm walking my upper body 45 degrees to the left, okay? Now I'm not, I could take the elbow into the arch of the foot and turn. I don't like that so much. I like to just keep my chest facing the floor. 
but instead of facing straight forward like we often do, I'm off to the left. And what this does is it changes the angle. So the nice thing about that three part or that three phase um, pose that we just did, you're staying on one side, but you're changing the angle at which you're getting to the hip, okay? And that's really, really valuable. Next thing, okay? Now, I would do those three setup poses in the first third of a sequence, okay? But now we're starting to move, I'm starting to think, okay, we're moving, we're breathing, maybe we're incorporating some sun salutation, some standing pose flows. There's a lot of things we can do to get to the hips, but I wanna do another active range of motion pose, okay? And then just for camera sake, I'm gonna come off the mat and be a little further back. You still won't be able to uh, get the, <clears throat> the whole view. But what I like to do here is little hip hurdles, okay? So I'm gonna be at the top of my mat, right? And then I'm gonna bend the knee into the chest and I'm gonna reach the leg forward like this, like a supta, or excuse me, like an utita hasta padangustasana without holding the foot. Stay here for a few breaths, then bend the knee and then take that knee out to the side, take it into tree pose without holding on, okay? So my hand is not holding my leg, I want the leg to be doing all of its own work, then I'll pick that back up, and then I will take that leg back behind me and lean a little bit forward. So essentially I've come into like a, an unsupported, unholding on, active range motion version of Natarajasana, and then I'll come back through, right? Tree pose, Uttita Hasta Parangustasana. And when I'm doing these things, I'm going back to the focus that we started with of active range of motion, okay? So I'm always gonna include some things that are more overtly leveraged, more engaged overt stretches, but then I'm also gonna be doing things like what we started with, I'm gonna be doing things like that hip hurdle where I'm training that leg to move into its full circumference where it's not all about stretching it. Instead, it's actually about the coordinated movements of what the leg does in Lotus, okay? And just kind of building more active range of motion. I think this is really important. Now, one of the poses that I included in the previous companion, everybody, about Hanumanasana, about splits. I also use in pretty much every Padmasana sequence I teach, which is a wide-footed squat. And this is really counterintuitive to some, but I'm gonna address it in a moment. So first, I usually will have people, will have been doing standing poses, maybe some sort of standing pose flow. Then we do a wide-legged standing forward bend. The exact sequence is up to you. And then we can kind of pop up, turn the feet out 45 degrees, take the forearms to the inner knees. I don't want the chest up. I don't want the arms on the knees. I want the elbows inside the knee. I want the hand inside the shin, right? And I want the head, the torso, and the pelvis all in the same plane. Those forearms are gently pressing out into the inner knees, okay? Now here's the thing, everybody. We, you have to have a sophisticated understanding of how the hip joint works to skillfully prepare yourself and others for Padmasana. Padmasana includes a lot of rotation. When you have a rotational demand, if you have tightness or restriction anywhere in that joint, it's going to decrease the rotational ability of that joint. I want you to imagine this, it's kind of weird, right? But imagine like you're driving a car. Right? Imagine you're driving a car and you have your hands on the steering wheel and you want to turn it. If I reach over and hold on to the steering wheel really hard, it's going to be really hard for you to turn it. It doesn't matter where I hold on to it. If I hold on to a steering wheel anywhere, it's going to be hard for you to turn it. If any part of your hip has excessive restriction, it doesn't matter where it is, you'll struggle with Lotus. Preparing the body for lotus is not just stretching your outer hip and your buttock over and over and over. That won't work because that isn't the only thing involved. We have to get to this full circumference. 
So if you have a lot of restriction in the inner legs and the adductors, then when you set up for the pose, when you set up for Padmasana, that knee can't drop. If the knee can't drop, a lot of times it's actually because the inner leg is tight. So that Prasarta Padottanasana and then this, <clears throat> this wide footed squat, everybody, is so good and such an easy to overlook element of Padmasana development. Last two. These are pretty tried and true, but there's a little technique to them that I think is really helpful to really wake your pose up. And again, this is one of these things that's a little bit more innovative um, that you may not have seen before outside of maybe some of the work we've done together if you've worked with me. So ankle to knee pose, okay? Now ankle to knee or fire log or double pigeon, whatever we wanna call it, or even just simple cross legs, okay? But a lot of times what will happen is people will just come forward here and stretch the hip. Totally fine, it's good, better than nothing. But we want better than just better than nothing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give the leg something to work against. So it's active in its stretch, which means it's gonna build more strength in its range, which means it's going to have greater coordination and greater skill, which means it's more likely to adapt to the stress of Padmasana. So my left knee is on top. I take my right hand in front of me and then with my left forearm, I just scoop under the knee, okay? And I let that knee th stay pretty much wherever it is. I just scoop under it and then I hold on and then with my knee, I press firmly and consistently down against the forearm. So I still go as far as I can go, but instead of letting my knee just hang there, or instead of just supporting my knee, I support my knee, I ever so slightly lift my knee, and with that knee, I press firmly down into that arm. So I'm engaging those muscles in their stretch position. And when you start to work like this, and you start to teach your students like this, everybody, a lot of light bulbs go off, okay? Same exact thing, but Gomukhasana. This is our final opener, our final prep. So we're gonna go right knee on top of left knee. And then same thing, when you come forward, you just take an arm, everybody. It can actually be any arm, but I, for this one, I like to use the opposite. So actually, no, I don't. I like to use the same side. Well, either way. Doesn't matter what arm, it doesn't matter what arm you hook underneath the knee. In fact, if you are a little bit more tight and you're more upright, you can just interlace both fingers underneath the outside of the top knee. And as you bring your chest a little forward, with the hands, hold that knee in place. With the knee, press into those hands. So those outer hip muscles are working in their stretched position. And when you start to do this, everybody, you're gonna feel a substantial increase in demand because again, instead of the body being, instead of the pose being kind of done to the body or that joint just being leveraged, you're getting the same amount of leverage but you're asking the muscles that are stretching to wake up a little bit and to be more actively engaged in the process. These things are really gonna help everyone. And like I said at the beginning of the video, even if they don't help you get into Lotus, they're really good poses in and of themselves. Everything we do in preparation for poses is probably even more important than the pose itself. All these things are really good. You can teach these to students at pretty much every level. Uh, and I find in my own practice and my teaching, Anytime I'm working with Padmasana, these are some of the main things I work with. So I really hope that they help you and you pass them along to your students. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and head over to jasonyoga.com and uh, I'll see you again. Thank you.